My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer Arca. I'll be one of my friends. I'm just trying to make you some money. Because my job is not just to entertain, but also to educate and teach on this glorious day. So call me 1-800-7-3-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. All right, today's action. Today's action is what, I, is what peak inflation looks like. We got a consumer price index number that was down versus last month. And what happened? Well, the Dow roared 535 points. S&P surged 2.13%. And the NASDAQ pulled it at 2.89%. House of pleasure. Or to put it another way, peak inflation is nirvana for stocks especially for out-of-favor stocks like fast-growing tech plays, financials, consumer discretionary names. That means you can buy everything from Microsoft to Wells Fargo to Target and even to Disney, which is roaring tonight after a smashing quarter. And I got to tell you, I would have been crushed if it weren't. And be sad, too. All right, now we've heard a lot of nonsense today. This is going to be the mean part of the segment. A lot of nonsense today from both extremes about the CPI number. President Biden crowed that we have 0% inflation, which is absurd. We have plenty of inflation. It just appears to have peaked. Then there's the other extreme, the camp that refuses to believe that the Fed can do anything right. These are the J-PAL haters, okay? They've made it personal as far as I'm concerned. They made it clear this number was ephemeral and will still require bold, aggressive action. Why? Because J-PAL is a fool who's so far behind the curve. I do not like these people, I am, I am. Both of these camps are motivated by ideology rather than the facts on the ground. I think it's insane not to recognize that Powell hit us with two 75 basis point rate hikes in a row. That's an extraordinary move, and it's working, darn it! For the last month, I've been saying we're at peak inflation because commodity prices have been collapsing. <laughs> I mention this because I've seen so many tightening cycles that I actually know how they play out. Look, there's got to be some benefit to being old. This is the only one I can think of, frankly. Peak inflation starts from the ground up. You have to look at the individual companies that make things in this country. If you did that, instead of simply looking at big picture spending numbers, you actually would have seen this coming. Or if you watch Man Money, because I've been on this, this for maybe like six weeks. If you'd done the homework, you'd know virtually everything we make in this country is now in a glut or about to be because of double orders, supply chain problems that cleared up, truckers that went back to work, crops that survived, plastics and fa factories that are up and running again, or any number of situations where supply has simply overwhelmed demand. Clothes, box board, cell phones, televisions. At the same time, demand destruction has crushed gasoline and travel. It all came together at once in one beautiful number this morning. But if you've missed it, if you were only looking at the macro data before today, well, I got to tell you, go get another job. Or at least get out of my face. All right, now what happens next? How about the extremists will be completely wrong? They won't be ridiculed because they're above the fray, but they'll be completely wrong. If history is any guide, the Fed will raise interest rates one or even two more times, maybe 50 basis points each, with the last one being consistent with overkill. Why? Because the gluts we're experiencing are just now starting. They're just now getting bad. We're not at trough, for heaven's sake. We're at peak. Let me give you a textbook example. The most basic piece of tech, the DRAM semiconductor, was in a glut a month ago. Earlier this week, the CEO of Micron, a huge DRAM producer, came on Squawk in the street, and he said the glut is far worse than he thought. Micron's now canceling a billion dollars worth of equipment orders just to try to get rid of the glut. Good luck. Yes, the home building stocks were very strong because peak inflation means we'll be looking at lower mortgage rates. But it's way too late for housing to make a comeback. The inventory of both new and old uh, homes is growing by the day. Prices are going down. Cancellation is going up. Simple. Don't overthink it. What else? Lots of different parts of, uh, and pieces needed everywhere in the system. Auto, cars, factories. They've been double ordered. So you see, everything's been double ordered. The stuff that you saw that you needed at Home Depot, they were double ordering that stuff. But that demand is now vanishing because of recession fears and products that are finished. 
So now there'll be future guts every, gluts everywhere that we're double ordering. There'll be gluts in washing machines, in dishwashers, in axles, in windows, in tires. You know, this morning I saw this commercial. I was working out, yeah, of course, to uh, you know, worldwide exchange. And uh, there's this ad, uh, some auto dealer. He was crowing that they have 150 new Hyundais available right now. Well, uh, get used to having 1,000 cars available that you can't sell unless you slash prices. That was a little cinema for a And gasoline, it's plentiful because there's less use at higher prices and also because there's been more production. This one's going by its way. Of course, you're going to hear that all of this is outweighed by the labor shortage. I know the federal government has thrown acetylene on an already overheated job market with these two big spending bills, but I also know the newfound gluts will eventually cause a ton of layoffs. There are retailers that are hanging on by their fingernails. If the Fed takes rates up another 100 basis points, they'll be pushed under. In fact, any retailer that has a problem with financing, and you know which ones I'm talking about, might go under in the meantime. Amazon's reduced its workforces by 100,000 people, and they can probably lower it by, I don't know, how about another 100,000? One by one, we'll hear about belt tightening at tech companies. Newsflash, they're all in belt tightening mode. Definitely not job offering mode. Where are all those computer science graduates going to go? I think they'll be competing against first-year employees who just got laid off, too. Oh, and so many of the companies that came public in the last two years are doing badly, and they're going to run out of money next year, particularly if their sales don't pick up, which they probably won't. Now, why can't people see all this? Because right now, it's mostly on the business side, not the consumer side. We call it the enterprise. You need to talk to all sorts of companies and have your ear to the ground. From my perch, I might talk to more CEOs than anyone in the world. These executives went from not having enough product to having too much product practically overnight. They're not talking about the great resignation anymore. They're talking about the great layoffs. It feels like nearly everyone has too many workers and too much inventory. And this happened all at once after a huge period where they couldn't get either the goods or the people to work for them. They now seem frozen, not knowing whether they need to cut prices aggressively or shrink their labor force, maybe be promotional, maybe not hire. That's what's in flux right now, people. You can see it every day from dozens of companies that just came public that have way too much hope and way too many people. Who needs all those advertising workers if there's a huge cut in ad spending? Who needs video game developers when there's far less gaming? Who needs all the programmers and engineers involved in the Internet when the Internet's slowing? Who needs people to make apparel or television sets when there's too much of those things, too, and they all have to be marked down? Hmm, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, wow, Kramer's so excited about that peak inflation, but it doesn't sound too good. And that's true to an extent. If you're running a marginal enterprise, this will be a very tough time. But if you're in the stock market picking stocks, frankly, it is heaven. The averages tell you that all the bearish experts who endlessly roasted me are now on the wrong side of the trade. That's because the stocks figured out peak inflation long before the economists. It's why the averages have rallied nicely, even as the margins will still be squeezed as we adjust to the inventory gluts. The market simply anticipated the CPI reading by a month. The rallies today, they're simply a recognition that peak inflation is great for stock valuations. Some companies will absolutely be hurt by the upcoming recession, but others will see their stocks soar because they're worth more in an environment where inflation is at last possibly under control. So let me give you the bottom line here. The so-called experts who stared at the big picture economic data and more than inflation will be endless, that the Fed was pushing and stirring, all that nonsense, well, they turned out to be dead wrong. The stock market, on the other hand, totally saw peak inflation coming. I think you had to be deliberately obtuse to miss this because commodity prices have been collapsing for a while now. But now it's undeniable. Even the bears and my detractors are trying to deny it anyway, but we'll have no luck doing so. How about Bill in Texas? Bill. Hey, good afternoon, Jim. How are you today? I am doing well, Bill. How about you? Hello? Yeah, Bill, you got me. How are you doing? I am doing great. I wanted to ask your uh, recommendation. I'm looking at investing a little money in retail space. And I know the big three, you know, Costco, Walmart, Target. But I'm looking at a fourth company. And as Peter Lynch once said, look around you and see where traffic's busy around stores. And TJ Maxx and Home Goods are very busy. And I want to know what you think about TJ Maxx. You know, I like TJ Maxx, and yes, and mine is very busy, too. I went there to try to get compression socks. They didn't have them. 
I ended up getting this kind of like Hanes underwear that I didn't really want. I don't know. I just probably apropos of nothing. But, uh, but I do say this. You got to be careful because they have a lot of European exposure. And that's why it's not as trustworthy as it used to be. But I'm coming for those compression socks. They told me they'd have them back. All right. Today's action is what peak inflation looks like. And it can be nirvana for a lot of different stocks. You should have seen it coming if you watch Mad Money, that is. All right, on Mad Money tonight, after earnings, does AEP have what it takes to electrify your portfolio? I'm checking in with the CEO. Then could lower oil prices be in our future? That would be something. I'm consulting the technicals to see where the hot commodity could be headed. And is the bear market in software finally coming to an end? I'm taking a look at the recent deals in this space and give you my take. So stay with Kramer! Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.